raise that bar. And that extra gear, that first three steps. Huge strides in the performance. That I might not be the player I am today. Hello, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And today we have the uh, fortunate um, chance of having Rob Konechny in, uh, in studio here today with which is awesome. And Rob obviously is Travis Konechny's dad, who's with the Philadelphia Flyers now and in his uh, third season in the NHL. And Rob, um, growing up for you, obviously a hockey background for you and, and your family, and you played some, some high level hockey as well. Uh, where's, where's home for you and kind of, where was the, uh, the upbringing of getting into hockey and hunting and, and all that good stuff? Hey Dwayne, thanks for having <laughs> me today. That's great. Um, <laughs> Well, we're from uh, Clacken, Ontario. Clacken, what yeah. a good name that is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. great. <laughs> so we live on a 50-acre farm out there. It's uh, in between London and Chatham. And, uh, yeah, uh, I did p- play a little hockey for yeah. the List of Cyclones back in the day, uh, one year, and uh, definitely not the level that you guys are used to dealing with. But <laughs> in the day, it was a big accomplishment yeah. for me, for sure. But I mean, having, I mean, obviously you got two boys and having boys that are playing hockey, having, you know, obviously experienced hockey and played it, uh, mm-hmm. but being able to pass it on to, you know, I'm sure when you had your two sons, you know, as they're kind of growing up, you're excited to get them into sport. And I know that they probably played a variety of different sports, but, uh, was your passion always hockey? Is that kind of something, was that kind of the, your kind of go-to sport growing up? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I loved hockey growing up and I also love fastball, Yeah, but, uh, hockey for sure was, uh, probably my favorite sport. And uh, yeah, I, I thought about it um, early on when the kids were little, but it was also like everyone finds hockey to be an expensive sport. Yeah. So it just took us a little while to get them going. But yeah, they both loved hockey. Um, started in uh, Ridgetown, Ontario, and yep. little hockey in West Lorne. Yeah. And um, Trav went on to play with the Chiefs, but wherever we went, uh, we met some great people and had a lot of fun, great memories for sure. Yeah, I know. That's cool. And for, uh, how old was Trav when he, when he kind of first started playing organized? Was he? Trav was pretty young. Mm -hmm. Um, he would have been novice age. Yeah. So back in those days, um, he didn't play like novice hockey right away. So it might even have been Tyke. Yeah. Where he started, uh, with Frank Vanborn and learned to skate. Yeah. Yeah. In Ridgetown and stuff like that. It was was cool. It was fun. Cool. Yeah. And then um, when when he got into the age of kind of being able to play travel hockey, kind of like that Adam age, right? Um, was it was it right away that, yeah, we're going to try out kind of, because he was involved in Chatham for a little bit as well, right? Well, his hockey in Chatham was in Pee Wee, but um, Trav started out, like I said, in Ridgetown. Then his rep hockey um, was in West Lauren. So he played a novice travel in West Lauren and um, had some success there. And uh, then... We were introduced to summer hockey. Yeah. Um, a, a family friend, Pat Gubbles from Mount Bridges, was a regional express hockey recruiter and said, hey, you know, maybe your son would like to come try and play with these uh, Adam kids, and that's out of his age group. Right. So it took some persuading, and Pat's a persuasive guy, and great <laughs> man, and those guys yeah. in Brantford uh, did their thing. And yeah. Uh, Trav wasn't real happy about that because his brother wasn't there. and Right. But his Nana made sure he got in the car and down the highway we went. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. kind of when we started thinking, well, people are looking for him to play on teams. And, yeah, you know, yeah, and a little bit in roller hockey, too, which is a wonder. Okay, cool. It's a great sport. Yeah. And um, later on, once Trav got it going in hockey and we realized the importance of his stride and skating and leg strength. Yeah. It's a great sport. Yeah. Not only it, for training, but it's still a fun sport. It's a really fun sport, and it's a good crossover. Like inline yeah. hockey is different than hockey, right? Oh, yeah. Obviously, but it's a, it's a lot of similarities clearly. But even handwork and stuff, I find with it, the puck's a little bit lighter, you can zip it a little bit quicker, and yeah, it's it's a cool, it's a real fun game. Oh yeah, yeah the, for sure, the kids like it because yeah. all the things when they're not quite strong enough to do with the puck, they can do it. So. Yeah. It's and there's, a, and there's not sport. as much stop and starting. You just glide around. It's awesome. <laughs> well, sometimes that sticks with them though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, so when he, so in Adam, then he would have, st- he would have stuck in West Lauren for kind of travel hockey in Adam as well. No, no. He, um, after the regional express stuff, and that's a, a group that's, um, I guess elite players that are recruited to play, um, it turned into a triple A tryout for the okay. winter hockey. Yeah. So he played minor Adam with the chiefs when he was a uh, novice age. Oh, okay. All right. And then, but then went over to Chatham and Pee Wee then. 
Yeah. So you guys played, live like right on the border of kind of Chatham Elgin, right? Like, so yeah. your whole kind of, his whole minor hockey was kind of teetering on that Chatham and Elgin. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah, that's kind of originally a, a good friend of mine. Um, Derek Edwards uh, was a coach there in, in Ridgetown and cut Trav. And <laughs> <laughs> so the next year we went to West Lauren and he, uh, he played as, minor hockey there yeah. and then chase did as well. And yeah. then, uh, going on, he stuck with the chiefs and chase, uh, played his minor hockey with the comments in West Lauren. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, really cool. Um, now spring hockey and su summer hockey, spring hockey, that is, it's still, it's, it's, it's back then it was more select teams. A lot of like higher end teams. Now there's spring hockey teams everywhere. Like every dad's running a spring hockey team from B to triple a. So, uh, I know, I know Trav played uh, spring for a while, but back then it was pretty cool as far as that 97 age group where you had like basically the best of the best in the area or further yeah. playing with each other. A great way to meet new parents and meet new friends, but also for the kids playing at that kind of higher level in the summer where you're playing with some of the, you know, some of the better players in the area. Right. So it was interesting for me because not only, I mean, I played hockey. I never really had a lot of success in hockey, so to speak or whatever, yeah. but, uh, so once Trav started having, I guess we'll say success or interest and stuff like that, being exposed to other families and people and meeting people is yeah. a good way to learn. Yeah. So that was uh, something that you could take and there's good and bad and everything on the whole. I think there's a lot of really good people with those, those uh, teams Yeah. and still some great hockey players. Like there's still players playing today that I was lucky enough to coach and yeah. recruit and be around. Yeah. And, and the, the first and foremost, the majority of those kids that are still playing are great kids. Yeah. No. And a lot of them I've had a chance to, to work with or be around that sure. 97 age group. And yeah, it's a, it was always, I mean, real, real quality kids. And especially it is cool to see so many of them still playing, I, whether they're playing the A or the NHL or, or yeah. beyond. I mean, it's Jacob really, right now. Yeah. Just, yeah it's awesome. Yeah. I just signed Jacob a Buffalo Bryson. and yeah. yeah, which is amazing. And yeah, he'll have, I'm sure he'll have a great, great little, you know, great career yeah. uh, for sure with him. And, um, and I, those are always decisions that are tough, right? So, I mean, as you're going through minor hockey, you know, with, you know, you have a son who's pretty elite and especially getting into Pee Wee and Bantam, you can kind of see, okay, man, he might, you know, he, he's got a chance of maybe playing some junior hockey, which yeah. to me, if a kid gets out of minor hockey and plays junior hockey, that's amazing. If he yeah. gets a chance to play beyond junior, that's even better. And yeah. if he goes higher than that, then that's unbelievable. Right. But, um, when, as, as a dad going through that and, you know, I know that, you know, you're a very calculated guy and, and you kind of look at your son. I, I'm going to say, honestly, without rose colored glasses, I think, I think you're very honest about, about your son, about Trav and, and Chase as well. But as he's going through minor hockey, where there's certain things, parts of his game skill wise that you're like, he's got to get better at this, or he's got to get better at that. Or other, were there ever things that you really were like, Hey, Trav, we got to kind of get you working on this. Oh yeah. There, there was things in my mind because I, the back in the day when I played hockey, um, you know, it was a different game. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to be around good people and you like yourself and your crew here and the skill. Yeah. And and then trying to, in my mind, I was more of a physical guy in that side of the game yeah. and seeing how it's all evolved today. Yeah. Where you see these awesome, fast hockey games that have a bit of edge to them still. Yeah. But yeah, there was. And, uh, but at the same time, I think the biggest important thing is uh, there's lots of different players at every level. Yeah. So then my son is who he is. So I had to kind of look at it that way. Yeah. Because there's things I wanted him to do that maybe physically he just couldn't do. Sure. So that was all part of the learning, I guess. Yeah. And so, was, and was, was Trav pretty receptive? Like if you had, Hey buddy, you got to get more physical or you got to you know, be stronger on the puck. Was he, was he pretty receptive to that kind of stuff? Well, or? that's another whole learning curve, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's another th part of our relationship that we had to work on is just, you know, when's the right time to push a button Yeah. or, or, or actually push it regardless yeah. or, or whatever. But yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, whether he would be mad at me at the moment, I was never one of those overbearing dads. Mm -hmm. And I learned to be around more often when he wanted me because mm -hmm. he already knew what I was thinking. Right. Based on the times he did come to me. So it wasn't too, too bad, but I would be, I'd be honest with him and tell yeah. him what I thought for sure. Yeah. Um, and then it was just more about him being a player that he was yeah, and then being good at that. And if hockey was what he wanted to do, then he had to commit to that. Yeah. No, and and it's hard. Cause even them as players, they want to do things sometimes they can't do or shouldn't do, or yeah. just because they see it and they're dreaming and watching TV, For Sure, and, but you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you just Don't can't. Yeah. I mean, he was like, 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I'm sure you got like, no, no, go, go, are you going to go with this? Cause I know you, you well, know. it's funny because my style of hockey, like when I was playing, uh, I used to think I was a goal scorer and I turned out to be the guy that coach would pat on the butt and say, go fight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at five, eight. And that's right. a tough way to make a living. Yeah. And he has a bit of that in him For sure and, and it makes me laugh because, uh, and I mean, it doesn't make me laugh because it was very serious issues when. Alliance Hockey was having disciplinary meetings with us about his, yeah. you know, not, I I'm not saying Chad was a dirty player, but he played with aggression and he understood that, you know, he, he was a target and he had to deal with it. And if no one else was dealing with it, he was going to deal with it. Yeah. So it's the warrior mentality to make space on the ice kind of thing. Yeah. And that's a tough way to play, but, For sure. but sometimes you got to do. And especially I find in minor hockey, when players have that edge, where they, where they play hard and they, you know, they, they protect the puck. Well, maybe when they get into contact hockey, they're finishing their hits. Sometimes it's a negative in minor hockey because they're going to get penalties. They're going to get, you know, some, some discipline issues, things like that. But those are all qualities that are, you don't ever want to take that out of the player because it's going to pay off down the road in junior and, and beyond. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's something that you have to control because like everything as they're learning, they're, they're going to make mistakes yeah. and bad decisions. And I'm, I, I'm not a, excuse kind of guy about uh hockey and penalties are penalties and and that's kind of getting out of the game like yeah. the real bad hits and i agree with that yeah but it is fast and people are sometimes just make bad decisions so for yeah sure. for sure yeah um like one one thing with Trav watching him play minor hockey was you know he was the type of guy that could get three goals in a game and blow a game wide open but he's also the guy that if you stole the puck off him earlier did something dirty to him earlier he's going to find you in the next period or the next shift and he's going to he's going to forget about the puck and try to lay out right and, absolutely and that was always something that I know for me when I talked to Trav when he was younger about him like you can't lose that like but also right. you can't you can't play like that all the time because you're not that that's not your style it's good to have that in your toolbox but right. at the end of the day if you focus too much on that you're taking away from you breaking games open or using your skill the way you can use it right and sometimes yeah. he'd go off the rails but yeah, absolutely <laughs> and that gets into the, like the whole next part of hockey where there be it begins in junior and then definitely at the NHL level where there where scouts and managers and coaches know what you're all about and and but the, you're playing with men now yeah so you got to still find a way to get that release or, or channel that energy into something more positive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which is sometimes Because hard. They're, you're playing with men and not everybody's six foot, whatever, 220 pounds. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, for Trav, I mean, he's super fit, very strong, but he's not six foot five. Right. So for him, like he plays a pretty big game for the size he's at. Right. And yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's impressive. You hear a lot of good talk chatter about, you know, the way he plays and how he plays, you know, plays physical and not afraid to get involved and stuff, which is huge. But I mean, again, that didn't just happen with a light switch. That was yeah. something that he's done since he's been in the young guy playing, you know, aggressive yeah. style of game. And it's obviously helped him get to where he is now. Absolutely. He's very competitive, but instead of hanging around, he's got to be in and out of corners and yeah. winning quick buck battles and yeah. be gone. Oh, for sure. Um, now, what was it like as a, as a father? So for you and, you know, you and, and Terry, your wife going through this um, with having a young guy who's a, who's a, who's a good player, like one of the top players in his age group in this area. And, you know, what was it like as a dad, just going to the rink every day and kind of, I'm sure hearing some negative stuff from other parents that jealous and, and whatever, you know, um, but how did you guys stay level through all that? Because it's hard not to get emotional or not to get too high or not to get too low when you hear that negative stuff. Well, Terry and I, um, we talked a lot about it. And yeah. obviously not with the boys around or whatever, but when there be issues that come up, whether it be in something from a visiting arena or a specific incident, or we would just deal with it quietly amongst ourselves and have a plan. Yeah. My wife is so spontaneous and she's like, you know, <laughs> so is our Trav gets it then. Well, but you know, <laughs> I'm definitely more calculated and, and aware, yeah. I, I think, but she's definitely aware, but she wants to deal with things right then. Yeah. So long story short, I think, we had some really good uh, mentors, I guess. I know a person, for example, we were very fortunate with great teammates. And yeah. uh, Brian Warad, for example, was a um, Drew was a great teammate to Trav, and Brian Warad was a great friend to me. Gave me some sound advice through different things. Just one of those guys that I gravitated to. Yeah. And uh, then from then on, as things come, we were just fortunate to find good people Yeah, at all different levels, like whether it be you guys through the training and TPH or, you know, um, Joe Birch was our first introduction to the 
uh, OHL scene and yep. then into the NHL that turned out later through Newport. Yeah. Donnie Meehan, Mark Guy, all those guys, any kind of thing along the way. Uh, I just never react it. Yeah. I would never react till I finally understood something or because I just had a feeling that usually if you react right away, it's the wrong thing to do. If And I didn't know. So I didn't want to have a Yeah. Problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing. I mean, we talked a little bit uh, today when, when you first got here, but just about, you know, we've had a good relationship for a lot of years now, but uh, you've always been very calculated and you've always been uh, very level, you know, even, even going to games, I, I go to, you know, go to minor hockey games now and you can tell that's Johnny's dad right there. You can tell he's yelling at Johnny, he's yelling at his buddy for not passing to him. His dad's animated. And at the end of the day, I think that hurts players more than it helps. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one thing with you is, you know, you, 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 this is something we talk to the young kids, and young families about a lot is surround your, your player. If he's good or she's good, surround them with, good people that genuinely care about the kid yeah. right? aren't looking for a, a, a payout, aren't looking for whatever it is. Right. But genuinely. And I think that's one thing that, that you've done a yeah. good job. Obviously you have a lot of connections in hockey. So you're able to ask questions and find out the right answers and then, yeah. you know, navigate it a little bit. Cause it does get cumbersome. Like when you go from minor hockey to junior, junior to pro, it's, I mean, it's yeah. so murky out there. Just the way it worked out, I guess it was Trav's abilities and the opportunities that he was, he was, he was being presented with that kind of opened up the hockey world to people that wanted to talk to me right? initially. But yeah. then once I seen this abundance of knowledge and, and, and it doesn't take long to sort through, Let, there's no mistake. All the, a lot of this stuff takes money to do and it is a business. But when you have people that are truly interested in your son long-term today, whatever's happening today for the most part doesn't affect tomorrow as much as we think it is. Right. And to be level headed about it and really understand, you know, what you need to accomplish long term is way better than reacting today. Right. That's just kind of the way I think. I yeah. Think about it. No, for sure. No, it's yeah. I think, and I think that's really good advice for a lot of parents just to like sit on it for a little bit, maybe ask some questions, maybe figure out more, you know, get, cause things do happen. Parents react. And then all of a sudden, and you hear about it like on Facebook or some parents piss at the coach. So they go post something on Facebook and that yeah. just blows up. And who does that hurt in the end? The kid. Absolutely. Right. Parents are crazy. Kid. He yeah. gets a bad rap. And and the the one thing I can say, whether it would be um, you know, Chase in track or Trav playing hockey, like whatever you're gonna do, if you're not having fun, I don't care. Like parents know if they're not making it fun or not. Yeah. And some things in life aren't fun. But if you're you know <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But if if you're fortunate enough and and, and you wanna work at something and your job is going to be an athletic sport, whether it's hockey or whatever, there's going to be unfortunately now parts that aren't as fun as others. But if you can continue to love it, like Trav loves hockey, then yeah. you're, then you're fortunate for sure. But if you take that away at an early age, it doesn't really matter. There's, there's uh, there's only a few guys that are in the right mental state and physical ability that it, that's why the NHL is special when you get there. Yeah. Oh, Cause it's hard to handle. Right. And that's why oh, you got a lot of guys that don't end up making it and yeah. they can be high picks, very skilled and they just can't, can't mentally handle that. Yeah. All the pressure that goes along with it. Right. And there is for sure. Oh, it's crazy. And now if going through minor hockey, obviously was, you know, was obviously a lot of fun and, and had some good experience and stuff, but that minor midget year, yeah. um, I talked to a lot of parents about this and they're like, Oh, it's just minor midgets, whether you're minor hockey, but it's probably the craziest year of, of minor hockey. And a lot of parents don't understand until they get there. And if their kid's on a triple A team, it's like, Oh, there's trench coats in the stands every game. There's agents talking to you. There's people talking. It's there's parents noise. There's a lot of different stuff. And for you, yeah. Travis, obviously, you know, potentially going to be a high pick who knows um, what was that minor midget year? Like specifically, as far as just playing with the chiefs, you guys had a great team. Yeah. Uh, good coaching staff there as well with Darren Kelly and those yeah. guys. Yeah. But what was it like just like day to day getting your Timmy's going to the rink and, and watching the games? What was that whole thing like to navigate in that minor midget year? It was a, it was a stressful time for the majority of parents, no doubt about it. Yeah. But by that time I had kind of in my mind um, thought that possibly uh, the best route um, for my son in this situation for me, how I seen it and dealt with it was NCAA. Okay. So I was convinced, but I also know I had an, uh, a deal with my son that if he maintained his academics, I would let him make the decision. So in dealing with scouts or anything, really they were falling on deaf ear, ears. <laughs> right. Virtue was great and he was telling me all this stuff, <laughs> yeah. but I already, you know, hadn't fallen in love with the whole hockey thing yet. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I wanted more for Trav out of his life than, you know, a couple years of whatever. 
and, and I wanted him, if he was going to do something, to be all in. It doesn't matter if you're going to be an engineer or a hockey player. You want to be committed to it and, and yeah. do it right and be an all-around good person. Yeah. Academics included. So for that year, yeah, I mean, I was curious about who was in the stands and you get to know some of the guys, but at the same time, I think it's important that it's not the end all be all every game, every result. And it was tough because I, I remember, I mean, our arch rival was the Chatham Cyclones and they smoked us the start of that year. Yeah. The first game. And it was like, everybody was up in arms or whatever. And I was like, no, that's, at least I, b- I believe it was that year. But anyways, it wasn't that that big a deal. And that's the way I would have dealt with anything. Yeah. But um, it's a tough time. And, and, I, and I think it's just important that, you know, these kids feel the pressure. So you can imagine us as parents. Oh, yeah. We've been through life and have all these other life skills. These guys don't yet. And, and they're feeling it if you're feeling it. So I tried not to, yeah. to, to share my thoughts with him or whatever. Yeah. And uh if How, that made any sense. To no, uh, totally. Because I think it's, it's tough, right? A lot of times parents don't involve their kids at all. So the kids have no idea. Right. And, uh, and sometimes they over involve their, their son or daughter. And then they're, they're, they're too, that's their scrambled eggs or jittery. They're, you know, they're too nervous or it's, it's, it's a stressful year. So I think, Having a good balance of how much you talk, you know, how much you let them know. If you're talking to a scout, they don't need to know that or, or whatever's going on behind the scenes, the political right. side, they don't need to know that. Right. Just play the game, have fun. And and you know and, what? Um, we were lucky with the Chiefs. We did have a good group. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the first concern for every parent group um, going into that year is who's coaching and what's going on. Because I guess to some degree um, that can have an impact. But I think as a bigger lesson, that should be the last thing you talk around the kids about because excuses aren't acceptable. And the first thing you have to learn if you really want to go on to junior hockey is to earn your ice time and to do all that stuff. So you're, it's already going against yeah, you know, what you should be thinking about right off the hop. So really, I think at the end of the day, um, just, just let the kids focus on getting better and, yeah, you know, and, and really parents, if any time there's a time to stay out of it, that's then. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think a lot of times parents talk too much around their kids, even just on the phone in the car t- saying how shitty the coach is or how bad this is. And then next thing you know, you know, little Johnny didn't have a problem with the coach, but yeah, the coach is an idiot. I don't play as much as I should. And then now all of a sudden there's a riff there. And yeah. so there's a lot of that that goes on in minor hockey, especially um, where parents are involved and they're too heated about it. They're too passionate about it. And I understand as a parent, you, you want what's best for your kid. And if you feel like your kid's getting slighted, you want to try to fix it. But the, a lot of times the kids don't have issues. They just want to yeah. play the game. Right. And I'm not going to say that in Trav's hockey career today, that I have never had an issue with any of his coaching or <laughs> right? yeah. any of that kind yeah. of stuff, but I think it's how you deal with it. Yeah. You know, cause there's good lessons that you can point it out. Like, if, if in fact you're being presented all the facts and how things are being dealt with or whatever's going on, well, then you got to work hard. So then that can't happen again. Or, yeah. or there's different ways to look at it. The easiest way is definitely not going to be the right way. Yeah. And that's to complain and make excuses. So you just got to deal with it. Yeah. And I think one thing too, that I know one thing we try to preach over the years here with all the kids we work with is just being accountable. So yep. if you're not getting ice time, okay, you can blame the coach. Maybe the coach golfed with that guy's kid. doesn't matter. But what are you not doing to get ice time? Maybe you're not working hard enough. Maybe you're not playing, maybe you're not playing the way he wants you to play or, or whatever that is, but you're right. Like own it yeah. and fix what you need to fix. And then if there's still issues we talked about earlier, then communicate, yeah. talk to your coach, find yeah. out what, what needs to be fixed in order for you to play more or be more reliable or whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. And I think, and I don't know, obviously, but I think the majority of uh, players that find that out early are ones that play longer and that uh, they just they really work on their game and being a team player first, and that's not to say that you don't need to have uh, individual success, but when you're a good teammate, all your teammates know it and all your coaches know it. It's just yeah, something that sure. they know. Yeah. So yeah, I think the quicker you find that out, no matter if you're in minor hockey, a third liner, fourth liner, or you're the guy everyone's talking about, if if. If you're not a good teammate and a guy who's willing to continue to want to get better, you're not going to play for long. Yeah, which makes total sense, right? And I think, yeah. and uh, realistically, those guys that are good teammates, tell me that they're not good people. They're not going to be a good dad one day, a good husband, right? Like the, for the most part, yeah. they're hardworking kids. They've got their stuff in line. And usually when you peel it back, you meet the parents and the parents are good people. 
right? Yeah. You meet a kid who's a bit of a off the rails or a little bit, not so a lot of times it's, it's coming from somewhere. Absolutely. Right? And you know what, from all the, all the, um, the great hockey people I've met, I've always had an understanding that at the end of the day, they have a job, whether it be you here with TPH and your, your crew here working or, um, Don Meehan and Newport sports or the Philadelphia flyers. Um, they all have people that that's their livelihood and they also want to surround themselves with good people. You know, there's people that have an, an amazing amount of talent that the system kind of pushes its way through. But at the end of the day, somebody's job is on the line, whether it be a minor midget coach yeah. or a junior coach. And you can never go wrong by being a good person, and a good hockey player. Yeah, I know for sure. Yeah. Um, now, fast forward through minor midget, obviously it was a you know good year. They 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 had a successful season. But now going into that OHL draft, I mean, a little bit different for you guys because you kind of had an idea that this might happen. Now in the back of your mind, once kind of everything laid out at the end of the season and you're like, man, he could potentially be a first rounder. Like, you know, he could be a high first round, you know, not knowing potentially yet exactly what or what's going to happen. But right. were you still in the back of your mind, you like, I still kind of would like him to go to school and get a degree or were you kind of leaning a little bit more? Well, we definitely pursued the option. Yeah. And um, I knew what he wanted to do. And so I let him, let him um, be available to go in the draft yeah. and made it clear that his intention was to play yeah. in the OHL. So at that time I knew uh, um, he had had some great academic teachers here. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping them in line. <laughs> yeah. But you know, more so than, than just that. I mean, it was a, it was a demanding schedule. Those young guys, that ninety-seven age group, and um, and the, I just know those guys yeah. that they capped um, coming to peak here and doing what they did and all the travel hockey. But the homework was done, and yeah. uh, when they started policing that themselves, and then you know understanding that it was important, and they're still kids. I get that, but it was just that they were tr making the effort and having a busy schedule. It was uh, yeah, it was good. Oh, it's yeah. And I mean, for Trav, obviously, you know, then the draft happens, he ends up going, you know, first overall, which is, yeah. you know, un, un, unreal. Yes. Um, what was that like? I mean, obviously it's different. Like and everyone kind of knows this, but the first couple of picks in the draft are kind of not necessarily set up, but the, the teams know, and usually the families have an idea and, you know, you're kind of maybe going to go to that city, you know, for the day of the draft or, or wherever Toronto or however it all works out. But what was it like for you and the family to go and kind of like this whole, cause that's a, that's an unbelievable honor, obviously. Yeah. But what was that whole kind of process well, like when it all kind of laid out and just the way my mind works. Uh, first off, the process was great, Yeah, but it's a whole bunch of other questions now that it's in my head that as a dad yeah. to keep parenting, but no, the process was, was great. Um, it was exciting. Um, the city of Ottawa was very receptive to Travis. I mean, um, it's a kind of the first time he feels like a little celebrity, right? When they yeah. introduce him and all that. So it was good for him and it was great for Ottawa, I think. And uh, then, you know, as a, as a parent, it, I started looking at the next things about the OHL and, and uh, you know, I was introduced to Joe Birch and um, I, I ran into another individual who was really great to me, Scott Luce, yeah. as far as, uh, you know, um, what's next. What things should I be thinking about? And just having people like that around, like London's full of, the area's full of knowledge and and, and I was sure. just fortunate to have those resources. Yeah. But I think it's important too for parents to, you know, and one thing you, you've mentioned a couple of times now is, okay, this is great. You went first overall, but we need to look ahead a little bit to see what's, yeah. you know, because a lot of times parents get caught up in that moment and then, okay, now what? And they don't have any idea what's next or, and I'm not talking yeah. NHL. I just mean even like, okay, what happens in September? Got drafted in April. Yeah. Right. What happens in September and October and exactly. all that stuff. Right? And, and all that stuff for sure. And I think if anything that I didn't do well is say, oh, great, Trav. I always, you know, <laughs> like I, I was always downplaying everything and, and then saying, are you sure this is what you want to do? Because if it is, this is a good accomplishment, but you, you're just setting yourself up for a lot more work, a lot more of this, a lot more of that. Yeah. And I, I, I wasn't getting ahead of myself at all. Yeah. And I didn't let him either. Yeah. Well, and you've always, I mean, Trav is, is an awesome kid, but we both know that Trav is, walks that line of, you know, sometimes, you know, a little bit too, too cocky, but he's, yeah. he's very confident, which is, I think you have to have that to be able to play. Yeah. Um. So for having a father like you is very like, just <laughs> you're an idiot, <laughs> leveling him off a little bit. Right. Like, I think it's, 
I think it's refreshing to hear that number one, as, as just an, an outsider, but also I think that's a big part of who Trav is, right? Cause he is a very, he is a good guy, man. Like when you get down to it, he's an awesome guy. He's a good teammate. He's there for the boys. Like he's got a lot of those qualities, but it's nice to have that kind of calming effect sometimes I think on, on certain guys, which I think is huge. Right. Yeah. And then, you know what he, I think he is a good guy and, and I think he, uh, but to do what he's doing, he needs to have fun. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with working hard and having fun for sure. So yeah. you can mix that yeah. in with anything you're doing. That's great. Yeah. Um, I want to tell a quick story about, uh, Trav's first year in Ottawa. So obviously we'll get into the hockey side of it in a sec, but I remember hearing, I was talking to Trav about this actually. So when he went to Ottawa, they had a private school set up for the boys and, you know, they were kind of the same idea. They were going to get their schooling done and then be able to practice and all that kind of stuff. And I know, uh, Trav is a good student, but you know, he's like his shenanigans and kind of carrying on once in a while. And he got in trouble at school, nothing major, but got in trouble at school. And you ended up driving down for a meeting with, I think the principal and the head of school and Trav and, and, uh, and Trav told me the story in his, in his words, but he's like, I was, I'm like, how'd it go? And, da, da, da. and he's like, well, I was more scared of my dad coming down. Like my dad's driving from Clacken to Ottawa. And I guess in the meeting, I'd heard this through the, the school because we had the same affiliation and um, mm-hmm. they couldn't believe that a hockey dad was there talking to the school and, and his son and a first overall pick in the OHL. And you said, if this ever happens again, you are coming home with me. Yeah. And, and the, the, I heard this from an administrator and she's like, I, I never had a hockey. I never like normally hockey parents, like, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll massage this. We'll cover it yeah. up. It's all good. Right. But he, he, you were very, you owned it or he had owned it. And it was like, and, and Tra- I remember Travis saying like, no, no, like he was serious. Like he would have <laughs> driven me home. And, uh, but those are things too. Like even just for the people around there, just knowing where he's, where he comes from. Right. Yeah. And I think those are, th- those are huge, you know, little lessons for him. Right. But yeah, because sometimes, you know, I don't, you just have to continue with the big plan. It doesn't matter if you're having success in the OHL today, you need your schooling to have a long, happy life and all that stuff. And I remember, um, I drove down with a, with a buddy. We were just there, like literally just an hour. Oh, drove really? home, got this news. I turned around and went right back there and, um, I don't know what was better, like the look in the coach's face, seeing me stand there, or, <laughs> yeah. or uh, seeing Trav, see me out of the blue standing yeah. there with the teacher. <laughs> it was uh, it was priceless. But yeah. I think like those are all things that are impactful, right? Like, yeah, Trav for sure. knows he's got to be accountable. Like, can't mess up, you know. Aside from being a, a you know high profile young kid, right? Which right. he didn't ask for. Just he's good, and that's what happened. But buddy, you gotta you gotta wake up. You know, you can't. Yeah. Be doing shenanigans at school. You got to, you know, you're, yeah. you know, and, and be I, responsible and, yeah. and, and continue to get ready for what's ahead of you for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. And now that first year hockey wise, I know for, you know, Trav going in and anybody going in as a first rounder in the O or, or the NHL, it doesn't matter. You're kind of, you're expected to be the guy and expected to, you know, hopefully perform, get some opportunity. And I know for him that, that first year, probably with a long line of hockey, but that first year probably set him up mentally you know, looking back on it now for, for the rest, just, you know, being accountable by the coach, being held accountable, being, get nice time cut out, not playing maybe as much as he wanted to. And, you know, maybe, yeah. you know, getting called out in meetings and different things yeah. like that, which I think for him was probably maybe a bit of a shock at first, but at the same time, that kid can take a beating. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? And you know what, mentally, um, mentally is, is probably one of the biggest skills that everybody has to master in yeah. athletics and we know uh, that it's, it's it's applicable in all sports. So yeah, I mean, if you can uh, deal with all these different individuals and hear what they're saying, because as you move on in hockey, there's different ways these guys try and teach you. Yeah, and it's not always um, as straightforward, or it's definitely not always positives, and and you still have to continue to take something from it. And look at yourself and uh, push change. Oh, for sure. Yeah, totally. Now, when, when when Trav's going through that stuff and kind of dealing with like that kind of adversity, and you know, as a parent, you're sitting at home, you're like, it's got to be hard, right? As you're just kind of na- helping him navigate. But how what was that like for you and Terry to kind of to kind of help walk him through some of these situations and help mm-hmm. him kind of deal with? Okay, coach doesn't like how you're playing right now. You're in the doghouse a little bit right now. But hey, buddy, you gotta. You know, was there a lot of conversations like that as far as just kind of bouncing ideas and trying to help yeah. them navigate through that? It's similar. First and foremost, you want your your child to be successful and you think of it that way. So in the moment, he's having a bad game or you see he's 
you know, benched or anything like that. That's natural for a parent, but I would always wait and get more information and, and listen to what Trav had to say and try and get a broader picture before I jumped to any conclusions on yeah. how his year is going to go or what they're trying to do. I'd always have questions because then when he'd be repeating what's going on or his idea, then I have an idea that he's learning or being taught something or right. moving forward that way. So I would just, you know, and sometimes, you know, the kids aren't forthcoming. Yeah. They want to, you know, and that's part of growing yeah. up. They want to try and handle it. So you might have to pry a little bit. Yeah. But eventually, um, yeah, he would talk to me about stuff and that would just be part of our relationship. And I knew if he had a phone call from Trav, something was on his mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I think sometimes I say this to parents all the time, but the, you know, these boys and girls, they need a parent more than they need another coach. For sure. Right. So you tell him about the game and why he got like, he needs a sounding board. He needs someone to support him. Obviously maybe give it to him a little bit when he needs it, but yeah. we need to be parents more than we need to be extra coaches to our kids sometimes. For sure. And you know what? Just say, and be yourself, be that, that guy, like be yourself and don't try and be somebody you're not and all them positive things. It's funny on the mental side of things, it doesn't take a lot to get you refocused. Right. Just that positive little yeah, bit of stuff. For sure. Instead of hearing two or three different things. Yeah. And it, it's quite likely contrary to what the coach wants. It's just going to be, uh, it's not going to be productive. So, right. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, now going through kind of the OHL, obviously, he's, you know, has a good year, you no know, decent first year. Second year was really, really good. And it was draft year. And then now, now, now you've got another draft on your hands, basically, as far as the NHL draft, was there a big difference there? Like as far as the OHL draft, when you look back on it, how minor the OHL draft really is and going for him, it was unbelievable going first overall, but really that NHL draft is kind of like, Oh, it's like another level as far as just that season going through that year and then getting ready for, you know, for kind of June when the draft happens. Yeah. It's a public event. So right. um, all the pressure and stuff that our family and my wife and Chase and Trav, like, you know, cause we're just hoping for him and to do well, you can't really hide from it because of that moment too, you're in the, you're on TV yeah, and all that. So it was, is no matter how you're prepared mentally, you're going to feel that stuff <laughs> yeah. and it's not a fun day. No, you know, unless you're first overall <laughs> yeah. or, or whatever, you know, yeah. but it turned out to be an awesome day, a wonderful day for Trav and our family, but it was tough, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, Newport sports, Trav's uh, group there, Mark guy, Don me they were calming, you know, yeah. and, uh, when you have people that believe in your son, that's check mark number one Yeah, for sure. and it's calming. And, uh, and then when a team picks them, that's another vote of confidence. And uh, the, when, you know, uh, we all know how things went for Bo when, uh, when somebody traded to, yeah. to get them. Yeah. That means they really want you. And, and, and Ron Hextall did that, made a trade because he, he, he wanted Trav on his team. So um, you can't ask for any more than that when, yeah. when somebody wants you. No, for so sure. That turned out to be very positive and awesome. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. And I mean, obviously like him going to the, I remember talking about it after the draft and I kind of want to get your, your, your perspective on this, but sitting in those seats, kind of waiting, hoping the first round is going to happen. And then first round gets lower and lower and lower. And I think it was 24th, right? Um, what's it like going from, you know, knowing that he's probably not going to be in the top 10, which is fine, yeah. but then going from like 15 to 24, like, was it, what was that like? Just kind of sitting there. Was there a lot of conversation going on or was it pretty just kind of quiet and watch and take it all in? Well, I could see it was, uh, the weight of the world was on his shoulders because I think anyone going into that draft has expectations when, when they're watching, you know, central scouting's rankings or whatever. And they're saying you're, you're somewhere around here and you can't help as a kid and even parents to get ahead of yourself a little bit. Sure, yeah. And then the next thought is, is, uh, what if he doesn't go in the first round? Yeah. It's not the end of the world, but it's, I always say to, to, to Travis and my whole family, the more you build something up and make a big deal out of it, the hard, like the long or the, the higher the drop or the further you got to fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so true. I've always tried to be in the middle ground and, and I, I, that was the day you needed <laughs> to be there because he was looking at me at one point and, uh, he's like, dad, and he doesn't come to me too often. And he was looking for an answer that I didn't have. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you know what? There's a funny story. Um, he, he, and it was, it was after 14, 15 when he was supposed to go. So the cameras on him off and then, and he was stressing out and he was upset or whatever. And he, 
he um he had gum <laughs> he had gum in his mouth or something and he passed it uh, to my to my wife Terry and uh, he's like mom do something with this you know he was just stressed and everything and it was caught on media and and then it wasn't that he was a spoiled brat that, <laughs> right. you know, has his mom do everything for him. Cause it's far from it. Yeah. She's, she's definitely not like that, but he was, it was a stressful moment and that was captured then. And, and it was really how he was feeling, you know, he was yeah. uncomfortable and, uh, but he made through it, you know? Yeah, no. And yeah. obviously things have turned out, turned out great. And now, you know, kind of fast forward through the OHL, he gets an opportunity to, to, to make the team as a youngster, you know, to make Philly and, and have three really, really good years for his first three years. And as a dad, I mean, it's him playing in the NHL at 19, 20 years old. What's that? I mean, what's that like? I mean, obviously we all played hockey. I, I'm sure your dream, like mine was as a young kid was, man, one day I'm going to score a goal in the NHL or, you know what I mean? And now all of a sudden your son's there and he's actually playing and it's in his first game. And, you know, what was that like kind of going through that process? Well, it's incredible, really. Yeah. So I've become a fan. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm letting my guard down because as all this progressed, there's really less and less input, right, for me. So you can kind of enjoy it. Right? Now I'm trying yeah. to enjoy it and just be his dad and and actually, you know, be a fan of the team and him and all that stuff. So it's cool. Yeah, it's fun, and uh, I definitely have the the bug with the Flyers. Um, they've been nice enough to have us down on the dad's trip. Yeah, and we get to kind of see what these guys are doing and. It, you can't help but become a fan and and uh, enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Was there anything when you went on these dad trips and kind of were around the team and and you know was there any anything that kind of surprised you as far as maybe like how well they get treated or you know was there anything I, I know you kind of heard it from trial like holy crap that we take a private jet and we got you know but being a part of it and being there like your first time was it like wow this is well yeah and you know it, to me to be honest just the amount they eat. <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah. it sounds silly, but it's crazy. Like, um, you know, I go to Trav's and I really have no idea what he's up to and his fridge is empty or, you know, how do you live on this in a week? I eat four meals a day. Yeah. You know, like, so going to the rink, there's a nutritious breakfast waiting there for him after his skate or practice, another meal. Yeah. Then if he says a game, he has a meal before and after. So yeah, it's just, and then, and then as the dads, as soon as they get on the airplane, there's another, like they maybe already ate or they're going to eat, but there's a meal on the airplane. It's yeah. just, it's, it is crazy. They call it the never hungry league. Eh? Like that's the name for I it. Can, it's unbelievable. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I agree. I, yeah. That was one thing I was like, wow, these yeah. guys eat a lot, but they also burn a ton of calories for sure. And what they're doing. Yeah. 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 And so with the, the hard part is as a coach or a dad, we're not burning those calories. So we're pounding <laughs> all these meals and not burning. it. Cause when I first got involved in Washington, I went down for development camp and, and uh, every morning, man, for the, for the prospects, there was full, full buffet breakfast. And then after the ski, like you said, full meal. And then they were taken care of at night. Like, and then I was fortunate this year to be around the, the team during the year a little bit. And it's unbelievable. Like it's a unreal setup. And Absolutely. these are, and these are guys making a little bit of money and uh, yeah. <laughs> everything's taken care of everything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's right. If they need it, um, they're going to be looked after. So it's yeah. pretty neat. No, it's super cool, man. Um, and now for him, you know, obviously going through, you know, now his, his third year in the NHL, a little bit more, you know, not a veteran yet per se, but obviously gets the league, gets to know it. What are the biggest differences that you notice in, in, in him and kind of his development, even just as a young man from the kind of his first year to seeing him now in his third year and going to visit and kind of seeing how, how he conducts himself and stuff. Is there anything that kind of stands out as far as, you know, the maturity process of, of being around and, and being in the NHL? Well, yeah, he's definitely matured. I mean, I mean, they have their own culture in a team with the veterans and and the younger players and the rookies, and I think that's great. And that's a a good way to be introduced to that new lifestyle or and the team and everything they've got going on there. Uh, I just think, you know, his confidence and some of his friends that he's with now are some of the younger players, and I see him, you know. Yeah, just just being confident and then helping them along in their way and yeah, right. and being a good friend that way. So I've noticed that little bit of a change. Yeah, where he's you know talking with some of the guys in different roles and stuff. So that's cool. Yeah. Um. As 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 far as his um conversations about hockey in general, it's 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 definitely always been a team thing for him. But he's he's really buying in to try and you know do what he's asked to do. Yeah. And understand that, you know, there's other things in the game that have to make him happy other than goals. And we've had these conversations with him for years, and a lot of coaches have. But when it's your job and, you know, everyone's chasing the Stanley Cup, 
it's a really, really, really good league. And yeah. There's not <laughs> yeah. a lot of yeah. difference between teams and, yeah. and everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction. So I really think, you know, and uh, he's working at it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. It's, it's, it's gotta be neat when you look back and, you know, maybe you and Terry are sitting down and looking back and, you know, just kind of where he was years ago to where he is now. And, you know, it's almost surreal to say, man, he played Bantam hockey for the chiefs and now he's playing for the Philadelphia Flyers. That's oh, for sure. pretty unreal, right? Like, it is for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Um, and then as far as, you know, just kind of him now, I mean, I know, I know your family's obviously, you know, loves your, your, your outdoor activities. He was super pumped about buying a boat. I think you actually went down and got it for him and we're super stoked about, about mm. picking it up and you guys love fishing and hunting yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. And so those are kind of things too, that I find like are character things with travel and family things. I mean, your wife hunts, you guys all hunt and, yeah. and fish, which is, you know, he grew up doing that stuff, right? He grew up kind of with that family environment and that, you know, and that, uh, yeah. and that time together. Right. Which I think is obviously part of who he is for sure. And, and, and I think, Right now, like it's nobody likes to be watching as an NHL player. Like you want to be playing, you know. Everybody all year long has has uh, talked about it. So now you're not happy, right? So right now his downtime, he wants to, you know, surround himself with family and do all the stuff that he doesn't do yeah. because of his commitments to to his job and hockey and all that stuff. And I think it's. It's unfortunate that they're not in the playoffs, but uh, to have that little bit of downtime, re-energize, get focused again and get ready because it'll be a short summer. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Because, yeah, it tends to fly by, right? You, yeah. yeah don't know but hunting and fishing, oh, yeah. They're loving it. The turkey hunting's going on right Is now. Is it, yeah? Yeah. Um, him and his brother have got a couple of turkeys <laughs> there the other day, and, and nice. uh, we're we're getting ready to, to, to head down to Jonesy's part of the world and – put the boat down at Port Franks nice. and yeah. get after some salmon. So good. It'll be fun. Oh, that's great, man. That's really good. Um, if you had to give any advice to any parents out there, as far as just, you know, I'm going to ask you two questions. Number one, what are the, what are the kind of, let's say three main qualities that you feel like Trav had? It could be personality, mental, it could be as, as skills like hockey skills that he had, but three or four things that you feel like that he really, you know, when you look back on it now that those are kind of some of the key things that helped him get through the levels, you know, kind of through his journey. He's very determined. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very determined person. And uh, if there's something that he wants to do, if it's something he wants to do, <laughs> he, he's, yeah. you know, it doesn't help for me to tell him. <laughs> right. Him. But once it's what he wants to do, yeah, he's going to work and do it. Yeah. I believe that. Um, two, I think, I think like you said, and I appreciate that you said it, that he's a good kid. So, you know, he's uh He's, I think he's a, I, he's a pleasure to be around, you know, I'm as a parent, sometimes, you know, the kids come home <laughs> and they're home for an hour and you're wondering when they're leaving, but that's just, um, that's just like too many roosters in that yeah, <laughs> barnyard. Yeah, just, he's sure. just checking to see if the same rules are still in place, <laughs> but no, I, I think, I think genuinely he's a good person and he, uh, he wants to you know, support people around them and have fun and be that kind of thing. And I think that goes a long way in any job you do for sure to be a good yeah. teammate. And, um, I, I think mentally the third thing is maybe one of the most important things in the sports is that he's, he's just tough. Yeah. You know, he, the way I painted the picture for him really early was what he was trying to do was going to be really difficult. Yeah. And I didn't know if he could do it. Yeah, for sure. But that's a different message than than making excuses or telling somebody they're great or whatever. Yeah. To to understand that the more I, you know, drive down the four oh one, you know, the further you get into this, the more work you're getting for yourself and really understanding and being tough mentally with whatever situation he's he's dealing with. I think is a huge asset for him. Well, and going through that mental toughness and even you guys as a family, like I remember when uh, one of the first summers, I think Trav was coming here and, and even with school and stuff, you guys lived, you know, 45 minutes away or almost an hour away. Yeah. And he would get driven in every, every morning. He'd be at the gym gate before we got here. Yeah. Uh, and 
would be here at seven, seven thirty with a group, I think women that were coming, driving in for work. Yeah. And then he get picked up at like five o'clock. And, yeah. and sometimes I was in the summer when he was here for, you know, a couple hours of training and on ice, but he would be here all day, he'd shoot on the goalies, go shoot pucks, do an extra workout. Like yeah. one thing with him is he was dedicated for sure, but he would do whatever, you know, if you told him, Hey, your ride's leaving at six, he'd get up at six and take off. Like, oh, yeah. you know, and those are things that, I mean, we see it too much now where the kid would be like, no, mom, you got to leave work and drive me in and come pick me. I, I'm not staying there all day, you know, where he just did it. And yeah. that, oh, that, was, yeah. that, that was the only and option. Right. So he did it. And yeah. Cause life had to go on for the rest of us, but I'll tell you like Terry and I and chase and our whole family, like there's a lot of people that helped out. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but end of the day, he still had to do it. Like, yeah. He still had to give up his time and yeah. work hard at it. So yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, that's cool. And the second part would be, what advice would you give to young minor hockey dad or mom out there that's maybe got a kid who's a pretty good player or playing double A or triple A and maybe has aspirations? Because a lot of times we say, oh, you'll never make the NHL. Like it's it's just, it's that 1% of 1% make the NHL. You're never going to make the NHL. Well, I'm, I'm in a different mindset. If I've got a young kid who's like, I want to play in the NHL. Okay. Just like you said, it's going to be hard. You got to work hard. Yeah. Because everybody wants to play in the NHL. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying you're not going to be able to. It's going to be really hard and the odds are against you. But if you want to work at it, well, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sound corny or nothing, but you know, it's funny because dreaming big, you know, Mike Kroos and I, when we were coaching with the Brantford regional team there, and that was something that we put on, on the shirts and stuff. And it's true. You know, you, just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't dream about it. Everybody dreams about it. For but sure. if you really want to do it, it's not going to be parents or coaches or anything else. God given talent there. I have seen so many good athletes not be successful because they don't work at it and they don't understand how fortunate they are. And maybe they just don't care to, and all that's all good. Yeah. But if it's something you want to do and you start making excuses, the only person is you Yeah. at the end of the day. So, you know what? Um, yeah. I mean, dream big and go for it, but it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. No. And I think, I, I think exactly. And I think setting your kids up for that work, you know, and opening doors, maybe getting them around the right people. But, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure you knew at a young age that, you know, just like you, you probably were, I know I was like, I loved hockey. Yeah. I, and if I had got to put, if, you know, back when we were young, we didn't have this kind of stuff that the boys have now and the girls have now. Right. But right. if, if we were probably put in a different environment, who knows, maybe we would have played a little bit further. Who, who knows. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, if I have a son or daughter that loves something, you know, the way the travel loves it, or you love hockey, or I did back in the day, I think for me, it's all about as a dad supporting it, opening right. doors and, and, and keep them accountable because they're the ones that got to put the work in. I right. can't put the work in. Right. And yeah. And, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, how, how do we deal with things? And, you know, I, I'm sure everyone has a different perspective on, you know, let's say Rob and Terry connect me and, and all the different things and how Travis went through his minor hockey. But at the end of the day, it was the way Travis did it. And, and it wasn't me pushing Travis to, to sports specific right. training. Yeah. It, it, those conversations came because he was pushing me that he wanted to continue to get better in hockey. And then as a parent who didn't know the answers, I had to do the research and find and stumble into the right people. And thank goodness we did, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. But that's different than the dad who, who who's pushing yeah. for that kind of stuff. So that's a small difference, but I think it's huge. Oh, I, I agree. Because yeah. just because someone's going to the gym, doesn't matter how great Mitch is. Yeah. You know, if you're not willing to do the yeah. work, doesn't matter if you have sports specific training or not or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hundred percent. So yeah. I think that's yeah. huge. I think it's yeah. really huge. So I don't th see myself as a crazy hockey dad. Yeah. I see myself as a guy that gave my kid, um, the opportunity or tried to find the opportunities for him to be successful at what he wanted to do. No different than chase going to engineering in Waterloo. Sure. It's a similar process. Yeah. 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 And then it's up to them to do what they want to do. Absolutely. Right? And, and even for chase, chase is, been super successful in his own, in his own field with you know, getting work and getting a degree and maybe going back to school. Like he's so, yeah, no matter what that is. And I don't, for me, you know, obviously we talk a lot about hockey cause that's what we're in and that's yeah. what we love. But I, I, the kids that we work with right now, I, I really want them to be good people before I care about how far they go in hockey. I get, I really want them to be accountable, be respectful, say hello, please, please, thank yous, all those kind of things. And then if they put the work in and then maybe they get a chance to play junior hockey, which is unbelievable, yeah. amazing. And they get to push further. Awesome. And I've you know, had that question uh, quite a few times based on Travis's successes about that. And I always say, I never drank the hockey Kool-Aid. And I think you believe that I truly didn't. And I forced Travis to, uh, 
you know, to excel as a, as a person, as yeah. a student and the hockey will look after itself if it does. Yeah. No, it's great, man. I, Alyssa, I really appreciate you coming. And one thing I, I really wanted, I, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on is because you've always been level. And, and even, and even hearing you talk now, like just, you know, very leveling, very calculated, which is good. And you don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. So if yeah. I don't have them, I'll find them. And and kind of like you did throughout the whole kind of career. And I'm sure, sure. for Chase too, right? Like, yeah. Oh, buddy, yeah. I don't know where to go for engineering, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> right? like, Absolutely. And he probably had some of the answers before you did, as far as knowing what he wanted to do and same yeah. with Trav, right? Like, yeah. um, and I think that's, you know, it, but all that stuff gets set up starting at like three years old four years old, five years old. You know what I mean? And yeah. kind of continuing to grow these young men and young women into, into what they're going to be. You know, um, I always joke one, one of my new, one of my new lines now is I'm a, I'm a dad with young kids. I'm old, but my okay, kids are young. You. Uh, but I always say, you know, I think every parent's crazy. I think the ones that hide at the best are the ones that, that, that do the best. Cause we all love our kids. We want our kids Absolutely. to do well. If our kid gets punched in the face, we're going to be upset. Right. Yeah. So I think, but if you can calculate, you know, if you can kind of take a step back and be like, okay, I got to deal, you know, I got to figure this out first before I react to it. Sure. I think that is, that's huge advice for any parent just to calm down. Yeah. Right. Calm it's down. It's hard because it's like, uh, it's like uh, mama bear protecting the den, right? For sure. <laughs> well, yeah. But I'm to, sure even yeah. now, like you know, yeah. when you're watching games, sometimes of Philly's playing and, and maybe Travis had a good first period and the second period, there's penalties, whatever. He's not playing a lot You're in your mind and you know, deep inside, you're like, get him on the ice, man. Like, you know, and, and it's hard as a parent because, you know, you're looking at the whole team, but you're also like, you love your kid, man. You want your kid to play, right? And yeah. so it, yeah. you go through this kind of, I'm sure, internal battle through your entire life. Of just, well, I realized why he's in NHL and I'm not. Because <laughs> I deal with things differently yeah. on the, in the spur of the moment. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Well, listen, thanks a lot, buddy. I really, uh, really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your insight and kind of all the, all the stories. It was awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks, I buddy. Enjoyed it. All right. All right.